So question one. A 33-year-old female patient presents to your medical outpatient with a three-month history of fatigue and headache. A physical exam reveals pallor, glossitis, and cholonychia. What is the most likely diagnosis? So that's for A. What's the most likely diagnosis? Iron deficiency anemia. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so B, what are the possible causes of the above condition? Okay, so these are like, so this will be maybe one mark. So this question is 10 marks. So maybe this will be one mark. What is the possible causes of the above condition? This might be five marks. Then what are the signs and symptoms may the patient present with? This may be um, maybe three, then two. Okay, so one question is um, 10 marks. So I want us to be orderly. So what are the possible causes of the above condition? Excessive bleeding, menorrhagia, yes, so that's one cause. <clears throat> Considering she's also 33. Occult bleeding, yes. Um, massive hemorrhage. Um, um, Three-month history, okay, yes, I mean, it can be there, but she has a three-month history of fatigue and Headache. So maybe she had a massive hemorrhage before she came. Yeah, but I mean, you can put that answer at the bottom. Insufficient increase in dietary insufficiency. Yes, so poor adequate iron intake. Increased demand. So what do you mean by increased demand? Pregnancy is one of the states, yes. GI bleeding, yes. Low iron diet, yes. Malabsorption. Malabsorption, yes. Fibroids. So when you say fibroids, do you mean that present with menorrhagia? So, so the answer should be menorrhagia, okay? So let's be systematic. You can start with iron losses, decreased iron intake, decreased absorption, then increased demand, okay? So for iron losses, you have things like bleeding. So if you have peptic ulcer diseases, so you'll have uh, uh, bleeding, you can have occult bleeding. So occult bleeding can occur in things like colorectal CA. You can have um, worms. So the hookworms. So we have Nekata Americans. We have Ancylostoma duodenale. Okay. Then iron loss through bleeding. We can have menorrhagia. You can have bleeding disorders, you know, VWD hemophilia, okay? And then for decreased iron, so malnutrition, or you have malabsorption, okay? So where is iron absorbed in the body? Where is iron absorbed in the body? Please let's type. 
type your answers. Or if you know, you can unmute so that we go fast. I have two more questions like this. Dodenum, isn't it? Good. So, so if you have a pathology in the duodenum, uh, iron won't be absorbed, okay? Then increased demand states, we have states like pregnancy. Okay. So at least we, have, we mentioned at least 10. So you, you can't, you can't go wrong with that. So what other signs and symptoms may the patient present with? So apart from fatigue, headache, pala, glossitis, and colonicia, what are other signs of iron deficiency anemia? Pica, yes. So pica is a state where you eat an an edible items. So, for example, you'd be craving things like stones, wood, plastic, paper. Uh -huh. But I mean, pica is one of the answers you put at the bottom. So start with the obvious ones. So angular stomatitis, yes, or angular chelitis, which other one? Palpitations, yes. So the patient will tell you they are aware of their heartbeat. Brittle hair, esophageal webs. So. Mm, Look now for esophageal webs. Um, you're talking about something called Plummer Vinson syndrome. Okay, so Plummer Vinson syndrome is where you have a triad of iron deficiency anemia, um, dysphagia, and esophageal webs. Okay, so put that answer at the bottom. So dizziness, yes. Dizziness, lightheadedness, difficulty in breathing, tachycardia. Syncope, okay? So those are the answers you expected to say. What lab tests would you perform to evaluate this patient? So when mentioning lab tests, you have to mention the test and what you expect, okay? So what lab test would you perform to evaluate this patient? In the very simple, you should be telling me CBC, what do you find in CBC? PBF, what do you find in PBF? This question is open for both other signs of anemia as well as specifically iron deficiency anemia. I don't understand your question, but the question is. The question, the root of the question is a patient with iron deficiency anemia. So you've been asked what signs that specific patient may present with, okay? So you can't start saying things like beefy tongue. And we know beefy tongue is expected in uh, macrocytic anemia. Okay, so you the question is asking iron deficiency anemia. Okay? So in PBF, microcytic hypochromic cells, yes. CBC, what will you find on CBC? What will we find on red blood cell indices? Red blood cell studies. So for example, MCV, MCH. MCH will be less than 80, yes. So it will give you a microcytic picture. So RBC will be low. Mm -hmm. Considering the patient has colonicia, this means that this is most likely severe iron deficiency anemia. So the RBCs will definitely be low. What about the reticulocyte count? Will it be high, normal, or increased? And 
हेलो वाई लो Because iron is a hematinic, so iron is required the production of RBCs. So initially, during iron deficiency anemia, the RBC, the reticulocyte count would be normal, and then eventually it will be low. Okay. What about iron studies? These things, I'm sure you did these things in hematology. So I'm wondering why you guys are not typing on the chat. Oh, let me ask. Ferritin will be low. Yes. So the storage form of iron below. Transferrin. TIBC. So low iron. Yes. Low ferritin. Low transferrin saturation. But high TIBC, total iron binding capacity will be raised, okay? Yeah. So remember, we're evaluating the patient. So you can also do vitamin B12 and B9 levels to rule out other causes of anemia. So B12 will be normal, folate will be normal. Okay? Okay, and do you have any question? We'll go to the next question. Ah, uh, this one, I want Ian to answer for me. Ian, let me read for you. A 25 year old type one diabetic patient presents to your accident and emergency with a two-day history of confusion and fever. Random blood sugar done on arrival is 37 millimoles per liter. You notice a sweet and fruity odor on his mouth. What is the most likely diagnosis? Ian? What's the diagnosis? Okay. Uh... It's diabetic ketoacidosis. Mm -hmm. So this is DKA. Good. What may have triggered this event? Considering he's type 1. Um, I'd say... Uh, so five triggers. Just try. Uh... Failure to adhere to the, like the insulin regimen. Mm -hmm. So uh, insulin non-compliance. So if you fail to take your insulin, you can get into a decay state. Yes. Another trigger. Uh, high sugar diet. Mm, so that is food. Yeah. Yeah. So I will rephrase that. You can say. Mm. Yeah, you can say high sugar diet or hyperglycemia because hyperglycemia is the trigger. Mm -hmm. Any other trigger? There are some obvious triggers. What's the most common trigger in patients with decay? Have you ever heard of infections as a trigger? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, so infections like pneumonia, recent surgeries also is a trigger. So the case usually triggered mostly by a pneumonia or a UTI. Those in endocrine, if you have clocked a patient to DKA, they'll tell you what preceded was either a pneumonia or a UTI most of the time. So trauma, if they've had trauma, if they've had previous surgeries, burns, Drugs can also trigger. So if you use immunosuppressive drugs like corticosteroids, they can trigger. Then alcohol use can also trigger DKA. Ah, yeah. Next, what lab tests would you 
would be used to aid in the diagnosis of this. Catherine, lab tests used in DKA that would aid in diagnosis. Catherine, Olga. So what is the cutoff for DKA? Blood glucose level? Come again. You've said blood glucose level. So More what is uh, what is the cutoff? Or oh, what yeah, what is the cutoff? More than 20. More than 20 millimoles. 20. 20 millimoles per liter. So for DKA, um, it's not really a cutoff, but um, the sugars would be high. So the normal sugars, what are the normal sugars? What are the normal blood sugar levels? I mean, come on, guys. Please. 3.2 to 7.8. 7.8, isn't it? So it will be higher than 7.8. But normally for DKA, if it's higher than 7.8, but it doesn't, okay, it usually doesn't pass 33, okay? So usually less than 33 millimoles per liter. Okay? Any other test you're going to do apart from blood glucose levels? Urine dipstick, yes. So what do you expect in urine dipstick? You know, for these questions, anytime you're asked about a test, you don't just mention the test, okay? You have to mention the test and what you expect. Or the, you, it's like your prompt, because you'll be, it's, it's, it's annoying. It's like you're saying, I'll do a CBC, okay. What do you expect? So urine dipstick, ketonuria, so high levels of ketones. Glucosuria, high levels of glucose. So we can call that urinalysis. I've seen you've written RBS, RBS we have said. ABGs, so what do you expect on blood gas analysis? What do you expect on blood gas analysis? Acidosis. Which type of acidosis? Rest or metabolic? Uh, metabolic acidosis. Have you ever heard of high anion gap? Metabolic acidosis? Yes, yes. Yes. So I'm sure you, you know the formula of mud piles. The D in mud piles for high anion gap metabolic acidosis was DKA. Okay. Yes. One more you're forgetting is it's to something to do with the kidney. Serum electrolyte panel, yes. So we usually call it UECs, urea, electrolyte, creatinine. So they'll be deranged. You'll have elevated blood urea nitrogen for the electrolyte panel. You expect hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. What other clinical features might she have presented with? Okay, so thank you, Olga. Um, Jacob, what other clinical features might she have presented with apart from confusion, fever, and sweet and fruit odor on his breath? Okay, so let's say thirst. Thirst, so excessive thirst, so it's not it's excessive thirst. What do you call that? The intro of the terminology. Have you heard of polydipsia? Oh. Uh, yes, polydipsia. Another one? Polyuria, yes. So excessive urination. Another one? Jacob, remind happy.
Jacob, this is your question. Kusmul uh, breathing, yes. So they will, they usually hyperventilate, okay? So that's what we call uh, Kusmul breathing. Remember, these guys are in high and iron gap metabolic acidosis. So as a compensation, they'll have the Kusmul breathing. Okay? So they are trying to get rid of the acid. So they usually breathe out, like breathing out the CO2. Okay, you remember, how do we compensate metabolic acidosis? So excessive breathing to get rid of the CO2. Yes, another one. There's one key feature, it's a GIT symptom. Abdominal pain. Mm, good, abdominal pain. So this is what will make you know that it's DKA and not a HHS. So patients with HHS usually don't have abdominal pain. Patients with DKA, they'll tell you they have abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, okay? Then they'll have dehydration. Can you hear my background noise? Can you hear my background noise? Okay, okay. You can't hear it sour. Um, then they usually have dehydration. So for dehydration, you'll say, what are the clinical features of dehydration? Hamdi, what are clinical features of dehydration that you know? Uh, uh, skin tagger. Reduce skin tagger. And okay. dry mucus. Dry mucus membrane, yes. Cracked lips. Sunken eyes. Okay. Good. Then another clinical feature is a coma. They usually come in comas. Uh, the last question will answer for us this one. Um, Patema, Baji, a 32-year-old male from Kayole is admitted with a 12-hour history of sudden onset profuse painless rice water diarrhea. He has vomited three times. He has no fever, but he's drowsy. He reports that five of his neighbors have been admitted to the hospital with a similar presentation in the past four days. What is the most likely diagnosis? Yes, Fatema? Um, I think it would be gastroenteritis mm -hmm. um with cholera yes so specifically cholera because of the rice water diarrhea what is the etiological agent causing this disease what causes uh, cholera vibrio cholera vibrio cholera good i uh, List three clinical signs, stroke findings that would suggest severe disease in this patient. So thank you for Tema. So Margaret, answer for us that. Clinical signs that would suggest severe disease in this patient. Or if I'm to paraphrase this question, um, what are the, what will you see from the patient to know that, that the cholera is worsening? Mm -hmm. Margaret, for those who know in the chat, please type. But this is uh, Margaret's question. Uh, the patient's patient will show signs of electrolyte imbalance, like muscular cramping due to low calcium levels. Or he, he can be delirious or can come uh, after, he can be brought after he has lost consciousness. Mm, good. So confusion or altered mental status, um, electrolyte imbalances, so muscle cramps. So it depends on the electrolyte. Since they're diarrhea, what electrolyte are we losing most when we diarrhea? Um, uh, sodium. We're losing sodium. 
So features of hyponatremia. What are the features? Seizures, coma, lethargy, headache, dizziness. Okay. <laughs> potassium, if he's he's also losing potassium. So features of hypokalemia. Mm -hmm. Margaret. Where's Margaret gone? So hypokalemia, basically it mostly affects the heart. So you'll have arrhythmias. Yes, palpitations. They'll also have muscle weakness. Okay, so that's good. Another feature um, will tell us. Ryan, another feature that indicates severe disease. It's in the question stem. They are vomiting. 12 hour history of sudden onset vomiting. Vomiting three times and diarrhearing for 12 hours. A key feature. Hypovolemic shock. Good. So, what is the sign of. So, hypovolemic shock indicates severe disease. So, what is the sign of hypovolemic shock? They're losing okay. a lot of fluid. Yes, 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 yes. Now I wanted to say the shock before my uh, internet. Oh, it broke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, now Sorry. you can tell us. You can tell us features of shock. So features of hypovolemic shock that the patient might have. Let me help I'm you with one. Sure. Let me help oh. you with one. No, don't mute. Let me help you with one. Altered mental status. So they'll be confused. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're losing they... water. So what happens to your pulse? You're losing fluid. So what happens to your pulse? Is it Does it get stronger or weaker? It gets weaker. 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 So you have a weak pulse. Uh -huh. What about urine? Do you expect them to have a lot of urine or little urine? Little. So little. liguria. Yeah, so they'll have oliguria. If not oliguria, just reduce urine output. And then um, their skin, will it be warm or cold? Cold. Cold, yeah. So they'll have cold extremities or cold skin. Then there's one more, very, very evident. After losing all this fluid, what sign will suggest severe disease? You're losing fluid through diarrhea and vomiting. What is what sign will show marked uh, severe disease in this patient? Where is Ryan? Ryan? Weight, weight loss? Um, no. 12 hour history, I mean, yes, but I'm looking for a more obvious one. So they'll be severely dehydrated, very dehydrated. Okay, Ryan. Yeah. Okay. So there'll be severe dehydration. So Ryan, severe tell us the signs of severe dehydration. I think we had mentioned them when you were doing the decay, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I think sunken eyes. It was mentioned. Sunken eyes. Yes. Uh, no, you mentioned uh, again. Tight mucous membrane. Yes, dry uh, mucous membrane. The skin, I forgot. <laughs> Cracked lips, sunken eyes, yeah. dry mucosa, dizziness. Okay. Ah, yeah. List investigations you would carry out and the expected findings. So, who has not talked? Terry, Terry Malaika. If you don't know, I'll help you. You know, it's a discussion. I'm not a lecturer. It's a just discussion. Terry? Is Terry there? Okay. Ian? Investigations right. you carry out. Uh, we start. Could do uh, 
stool stool microscopy so um okay so stool microscopy what did you see uh the the vibricular are usually mortal so you see uh mortal let's see mortal bacteria mm -hmm. so uh, so first of all you culture okay so stool culture and my mic then microscopy so you'd see they usually comma shaped and uh, yeah. uh gram which gram stain are they gram positive or negative the gram negative gram negative so you'll say stool culture and microscopy um comma shaped gram negative bacteria uh -huh. another test you do now let's go to the baseline mm -hmm. tests CBC. UECs. Okay, yeah. CBC, yeah. Okay, let's go to UECs. UECs, what do you expect? Uh, so there'll be uh, hyponatremia. Mm -hmm. Hyponatremia. Uh, hypokalemia. In this case, we also have hypokalemia, yes. Yeah, remember your diarrhea ring and your vomiting, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. CBC, what do you expect to see? Remember, complete blood count has all three cell lines. You have RBCs, yeah. WBCs, and platelets. So, which will be the most affected? Uh, WBCs. Yes. So, you'll see leukocytosis. Okay. Yes. Another thing you'll see, they are, lo they are losing so much fluid. So, the hematocrit will be raised. So what is hematocrit? Hematocrit is there. The portion of RBCs in blood, so it will yeah. be raised. Okay, since you're losing the plasma, the water yeah. component, and then another test, four tests. So we have said stool culture microscopy, UECs and CBC. One more. Okay, let me help you. We we'll do a BGA. What do you expect to see in a BGA? Blood gas analysis. Uh, so it's not either of the rest it's either metabolic alkalosis or yeah. acidosis what do you, do you expect to see As metabolic acidosis yeah metabolic acidosis okay I list complications I of this condition oh sorry sorry um, um yeah it's for Tim. okay i can just type it yeah okay should i just type it in the chat would that be easier yeah, yeah you can type okay uh least complications of this condition i think we have said them as we have already said severe dehydration hypovolemic shock um any other complication hamdi hasn't talked today hamdi MD. Complications of cholera. There's one very obvious. I think we we knew from what what do they usually say? If you if you don't treat cholera after 24 hours, what happens? MD is not there. Death. Death, yeah. Death. So I mean, death is a complication. Then they usually have hypovolemic shock, so the amount of fluid they have is less. We said, so what usually happens is we have acute kidney injury. So the AKI is pre-renal, okay? You remember, causes of AKI, we have pre-renal, renal, and post-renal. But for them, it's pre-renal since it's occurring before getting to the kidney, okay? And then the last one, outline prevention strategies for this disease. So maybe three marks. This is very easy. You guys should be singing in the chat. Catherine.
Yes, prevention strategies. Community education on water sanitation. Yes. I would say good hygiene practices. Mm -hmm. Good hygiene practices. So what are those? What are good hygiene practices? So proper hand washing techniques, disposal of fishes, proper disposal of human waste, washing food and hands before eating, washing food and hands after visiting the toilet, treatment of drinking water. So that's boiling it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fatima's question, if the patient has been vomiting, why would there be acidosis? Isn't he losing chlorine as well? Yes. So the issue with this patient is he's vomiting and diarrhearing. Okay. So the main cause of the acidosis is due to the fact that the fact that um they're diarrhearing, so they're losing um they're losing alkaline while diarrhearing. And then another thing is during vomiting, severe vomiting. You know, at first, when you're vomiting, you lose acid, isn't it? So you become in an alkalotic state. But if it becomes severe, you now start vomiting out bicarbonate. Okay. It now becomes acidosis. Okay. Fatem, are you okay? Okay, thank you. Any any question? So this is how the questions will come up like this. So you have to answer it in one minute. You think and answer. Think and answer. Okay, any question? So there's no question. Um...